Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. We went from the lowest of lows to the middest of highs. We're still a little <laughs> bit before the top, but we were all doom and gloom, and we have actually a lot to be positive and about right now, believe it or not. We'll get into plenty of that and more in this week's episode. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Patrick. I'm Matt. And I'm Garrett. So let's be real. We were at the lowest of lows. The The angel sweep, I mean, it was bad. It was bad for the team. We're bickering in group chat and stuff. Like, you know, everyone's frustrated. Everyone's mad. And we kind of thought that was going to be the nail in the coffin. Like, it's, that, it seemed like it. The sky was falling, you it know? It was bad. And I, like, all season, I was always like, don't worry. The sky's not falling. There's a lot to look forward to. And then and the then, sky fell. Yeah. It fell. Since Father's Day, it's just been falling more and more. And and I thought that it couldn't get much worse. And and then Sunday, you know, Julio's injury and Monday, JP's injury. We'll get into all this. Uh, that that really hit hard. It brought the lowest of lows. Like, we, we were at rock bottom. 100%. And the craziest thing about this is despite the Mariners, like, steady falling, they still had managed to not be swept all year and then the angels series at home was the first they they got swept and the streak was over and uh so was any type of fun i was having with mariners baseball yeah not to mention we lost three out of four games to the angels the last three games to the angels in the four game series before the break and then came out of the break only took one of the three versus houston and then got swept by the angels so it was heavy that that series versus Houston coming out of the break was huge. And, I mean, we couldn't do anything. We could hardly score. Our offense is just nowhere to be found. It's more of the same, uh, worse than usual. Uh, at least in game three, we didn't have to face the toughest bullpen that the Astros have. So we kind of took advantage of that as well later in the game. But we did have the lead early in that game, which changed the trajectory for their their bullpen they've already thrown their best bullpen at us the first two games so they were willing to kind of throw that game our direction I guess um so we ended up taking one out of three of those games which kind of saved saved the day because uh after getting swept by the uh angels after that it would have hurt double to be double swept by teams in our division especially the angels it was a long week it was it really feels like two weeks since we've last got together to talk about this i know honestly i couldn't believe it like taking the notes i was like has it really only been a week it felt like an eternity we're already behind on a bunch of stuff so much has happened wow it's a roller coaster we early this week we didn't think we had a lot to talk about it was going to be all doom and gloom but in Mariners fashion, they give us something to be hopeful about when it looks the worst. Just enough mm-hmm. to string us along and give us hope, which is it's good. I mean, let's look at our division at least. Houston is 55 and 49, and the Mariners, they're 55 and 51. So Houston has just not played two games that we've played. We don't know if they're wins or losses yet. But we are technically one game behind, but it's a virtual tie for the first place spot in our division, depending on how those games shake out with Houston. Uh, Texas, they're 51 and 54, so they're still behind us by three and a half games or so. And that's a good spot to be in, although the wild cards race is pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, if the Mariners want a chance, their best bet is going through the division, not trying to hold on to a wild card spot because the AL West is kind of down this year as a whole. Usually it's the AL Central that's like that, that is kind of the crapshoot and, you know, they they don't really have a shot. This year it is the AL West. Um, yeah. Houston has been playing better and uh, clearly they're in first place. But even still, by even the Astros standards with them being in first place currently is a down year for them. And it's down across the league, like the AL West win percentage. So the Mariners, yeah, there's no hope for a wild card spot this year, really. Like, if we want the playoffs, we need to take this division. What sucks about where we are and how the AL West isn't as good, right? So, like, even if we're in first place in our division, like Houston is right now, they would still have to play in the wild card series, right? So... 
it kind of sucks that maybe our front office is thinking like, well, it doesn't matter if we win the division or get the third wild card spot because either way we're going to have to play in a wild card series because their record is worse than the west or the the east and the central. So, like if even if we're shooting for the division or the wild card spots like they're the same outcome. We play a wild card series. Mm. And it kind of sucks to think that maybe the front office is just like, okay, well, then we can just shoot for the wild card spot and not the division. And it gives them another chance to like another out. You know what I mean? But I, we need to win this division. Houston's won it, what, eight years in a row? We, yeah. It's theirs. It's, it's up for the taking. And this is our best opportunity. We are in a decent spot and with a good chance to do that. It's just that on Sunday Julio hurt his ankle hopefully it's not too bad there's no fractures but it was an ankle sprain and they put him on the IL and Monday JP fractured his pinky finger and he's out for four to six weeks so uh before our big trade we were at an all-time low where we just called up a bunch of triple-a guys and it two massive our, losses our lineups those days looked so ugly and then keep in mind the day that we called up all the triple-a guys uh locklear cade marlowe um leo rivas yeah uh we put them in the game and they were the only mariners to have a hit in that game, which just shows how bad, how anemic our offense was. It was embarrassing. And we only had like three hits that day. And three it was hits, and they were all guys. from Tacoma Rainiers. Yep. It's ridiculous. And the Mariners only scored one game or one run per game in the Angels series. Ugh. It was just atrocious. We were miserable. We had no hope. We're like, what? It can't get any worse. And a blessing... From above, we got Randy Arozarena yes. in a trade. All-star left fielder from the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, we've <laughs> been talking a lot about hoping we get him, especially you. You were spearheading that like crazy. Garrett was right there with me, man. We love Randy. Ra he, <laughs> Garrett was giving him shit in left field when they were in Seattle a couple <laughs> of years ago. Yeah, and a couple years ago on Mother's him. Day. He's in... <clears throat> left field and I was like Randy your shoes had died <laughs> and then he made an excellent catch and turned around and was like mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I was like ah, you, got me. <laughs> you were trying you were trying but now you can yell at him from the left field line all you want because he'll be here for <laughs> half the games of the season. It'll be great. Yeah. You can yell at him that his shoe is untied from our side this time. <laughs> I probably won't. <laughs> yeah well it'd be fun. So do you think there's something wrong in the clubhouse the air is bad in there. I think it was until this a Rosarena trade. Uh, and the players had said just as much. Uh, I believe Rayleigh and Raleigh had both said that it's not fun in the clubhouse. No one's having a good time. And I mean, we, we felt that from our side, we weren't having fun. Imagine being in the clubhouse, actually being the players and losing night in and night out like that. Yeah. Dude, they were getting booed off the field, too, after so many situations. I mean, not just one guy. Like, the whole team was getting booed at times. It's like, that's got to feel terrible in the clubhouse. And, yeah, there were there's problems. There was a bad air in there. And the Randy Arozarena, the light and the dark we needed, is in our clubhouse. They're teaching. It was it. Uh, <laughs> we're teaching them how to do the the wind dance. Wind dance. Who's out there teaching them how to do that? Robles. Uh, Robles. Yeah, Victor. <clears throat> He's yeah. a cool dude. I think our outfield is the coolest outfield with Robles and Julio and Randy now. Oh, that's so good. Put Mitch Haniger on the bench, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I think another thing from this Randy trade is that it did show that the Mariners are trying to win. They didn't give up on the season. They didn't get swept at home, and they were just like, whatever, and throwing the towel. And I think, I mean, there's two reasons. One, the Mariners have been playing the White Sox. But also... Abe, dude, whatever it takes to boost the morale of these guys, take those wins. So glad we're differentiating ourselves from the second worst offense in the league. Yeah. They're like They're down there with us, so we're, we're at least smacking them around. And it has been nice since the Randy trade. Uh, haven't lost. Before he even got here, you yeah. know, they announce it. The Mariners go out and kick the shit out of the White Sox. Oh, yeah. And he wasn't even here yet. Yeah. And then he played tonight along with uh, Jimmy Garcia. Yeah, yes. Jimmy. So, and we traded for another player, a great reliever. 
despite his name looking like Yimmy, it is in fact Jimmy. That threw me for a loop too. When I've I said it. Yimmy for years. Yimmy. I don't know, but his name's Jimmy. Jimmy Garcia. Jimmy. Uh, we got him from the Blue Jays. We got rid of Jonathan Class A, and a catcher that was in single A. So okay, not a lot to give up on. And also, I mean, you know me, short kings unite. But uh, <laughs> the the guy, the catcher that we gave up, the prospect, he's a five seven catcher. Wow. And that's just, I don't know. I feel like that's not a big enough size, especially at the MLB level. So, I mean, don't the Blue Jays have that kind of guy? They have like a short, pudgy catcher that looks funny back there. Every time he stands up, he looks tiny, <laughs> but he's like wide too. So, I don't know. It's good and bad. They got a low center of gravity. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean, I don't mind giving up those prospects there's none of the guys on our top 100 prospect list we still have full capability to trade for another huge guy and that's just a i don't know it's something that we did because we were moving on from ryan stanick we traded yeah. him to the mets and got a uh just an outfielder prospect mm -hmm. looks pretty good i forget his name right now i i've got it uh Rylan Thomas. Yeah. Rylan Thomas is the prospect we got from, from the Mets for trading Ryan Stanek. Uh, uh, Rylan was the 30th ranked prospect in the Mets organization. So, you know, not a top of the line guy, but also. It seemed like he had a lot of upside when yeah. I was reading about him. So, And uh, what's kind of funny is uh, Stanek. Got traded on his birthday, which Ooh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a, it's a little rough. Sorry, and Ryan. Um, another guy that the Mariners, uh, Aiden Smith, who mm -hmm. was part of the a Rose Arena trade, he was a prospect we had given up. Uh, it was three days after or two days after his birthday. So don't have any birthdays in the Mariners organization, <laughs> or we might trade you. Uh, <laughs> well, that's that's all right. I mean, getting Randy for guys that aren't on our top 100 prospect list ten. is awesome top 10 what these guys were top 100 you keep saying top 100 top you mean 10. top 10 in our in our system yeah i meant top 100 prospects like on their mlb ranking oh, like God. top 100 oh, prospects the mariners so have like our top 10 <laughs> no what you were trying to say okay. no we have like four or five guys that are ranked top 100 throughout the mm, league gotcha. so that's what i am referring to but i mean i'm okay with giving up those lower end prospects mid lower end basically lottery tickets to get randy yes and i'm okay with what we gave up to get uh jimmy jimmy garcia over here it's a lateral move with that move with the mets like i was saying we we just replaced stanick and we replaced class a with another prospect outfielder so very lateral move there and yeah. getting someone who's performing well rather than struggling and i like that add to our bullpen and i love i mean depoto full-on fleece the rays i mean the Rays look for s specific things in players, and whatever they see in the players they're getting is they're going to try to capitalize on, and we don't know until that happens, right? So yeah, we'll, we'll but, see, but it feels like a fleece right now. I mean, single A guys for a starting every day all-star left fielder, that seems like a fleece. Even if they pan out four years from now or whatever, if they ever even crack a major league roster, which <clears throat> who's to say if they ever will? You can never tell, and... uh Still, I mean, I think it's a fleece. They're trying not to extend Randy. Basically, they're trading him because they're like, ah, we're probably not going to extend Randy because of our future. We're going to load up on lottery tickets rather than extend him and spend a lot of money. And that's what the Rays do. Yeah. So we got Randy for three years. Nice. We're going to have to pay him. He's going to go into arbitration, oh. and then we pay him. Yeah, we'll Let's probably try to extend yeah. him. <laughs> Probably try to settle on something that's around the the uh, qualifying offer, or better, depending on if we want to try to extend him with sure. a, a solid contract rather than go through that arbitration process and all that. But I mean, he's got to be getting more than the qualifying offer. He's valuable. Yes, he's so very good. He'll be making twenty million, probably. I'm just gonna guess. <laughs> you know, in the next. <laughs> couple of years he'll be making a lot of money sure cut the check let's do it let's go <laughs> so and sign up cal raleigh as well <laughs> yes that's a big one yeah so now with a rose arena in left field julio will hopefully be back sooner rather than later 
in center field. Where where does that leave like Robles and Haniger? Because Robles is this is going to be hard to believe. I swear to God, it's true. Robles is a player on the Seattle Mariners that is hitting over 300. Can you believe Woo! it? 305. He went three for five today and has now raised his season average to 305. And his vibes are awesome. He fits in great with the team. He's funny. He's a fun guy. Um, Haniger mm-hmm. is not, he's just not performing. And mm-hmm. like, do we, do we have our outfield be Robles, Julio, uh, Rosarena? That and sounds great to yep, me. That would be, I mean, that would be perfect for me. And I guess Haniger just, Canzone will be back eventually. Yeah, and I think Canzone's going to find himself in AAA. That's what I'm thinking. I think so. So Haniger. Yeah, Rayleigh. Yeah, yeah. Rayleigh. So Haniger's going to find himself on the bench more. Rayleigh's, I think Rayleigh's going to work himself in with one of the dudes and like kind of platoon with Randy, maybe, because Randy hits lefties a lot better than he hits righties. I looked up his splits, and he's not great against righties. I mean, 200 ish average against right handed starters and really good against left handed starters. So he might find himself platooning. Um, Robles bats right handed. So. And the way he's been playing, like you said, he's hitting over 300. And since he's come to the Mariners, he's hitting like 390. So he's been one of the bright spots on our team. His OPS is 826. I know he hasn't had as many at-bats as a lot of guys this season, and we ended up grabbing him mid-season. And he's been great for us. The way he's been playing, he should be starting more. Hanniger should see the bench more. Yes. And then yep. Rayleigh and Arozarena can have that platoon advantage. Because Rayleigh hits righties better and Rosarena hits lefties better. I'm going to be awesome, though. Or, I'm going to be awesome. awesome. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, though. Uh, Luke Rayleigh has not, he hasn't been coming through recently. He's been on kind of a downward slope. Uh, and it's disappointing to see. I like Rayleigh a lot, I think he can bring a lot of value to the team. But it's just, it hasn't been there. He started off really strong, especially when he first started getting more playing time. You were like, this guy needs to be playing every day. And now it's kind of teetered off a little bit. Uh, That's what happened last year. Last year, for the Rays, he mashed all first half and then had a kind of terrible second half. So I'm hoping that's not the case. He did hit a a homer on Sunday, a big, tall homer on Sunday. I was like, go, go, go. But, I mean, Mitch Um, Haniger hit a home run on, like, Tuesday. That doesn't mean... true. He's turned it around either. I just think that uh, he's he's useful in like late yeah. game situations. Maybe he doesn't need to start every day, and he hasn't proved that he's like that right now. And the way we have Randy and Robles, and I, I don't know, we're very right handed is the problem. So I don't mind him being a lefty bat in the mix, just sure. split playing time, you know. Yeah, and hopefully Mitch Haniger's not out there as much. I mean, so we added. We added, since Ty France has been DFA'd and everything, right? We, I don't even think we, we talked about that. We That's put how long him, it's been. Yeah, yeah. Ty France went, got put on outright waivers, cleared waivers, and then the Mariners DFA'd him the next day. So we're moving on from Ty France. We called up two Vossler and Locklear, two first basemen, and they're going to be a platoon at first base right now. Yeah. And DHing. So. I thought that that move was a was the opening the door for the Mariners to make a move for a first baseman in the league. Uh, Vlad, they've been front runners for Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but it doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. Uh, like they've kind of been saying all season in, in Toronto. And I don't know. Are we going to stick with that platoon, or are we going to upgrade at first base before Tuesday? We should still upgrade first base. We have to. I think that. I think that's just a placeholder until we get a first baseman and Vlad is our first choice until that's a direct no we're just the Mariners are just sitting on their hands and then have to make a move on another first baseman they have in mind one thing I wanted to talk about the Ty France thing which was the whole situation was kind of strange in just the way it was handled and stuff kind of seen I mean obviously he was declining and stuff but it did seem like it did happen just out of nowhere you know what I'm saying? I wasn't like, yeah. expecting him to be the first domino to fall. Yeah. And what was weird about that is because of the outright waiver thing, 
when he cleared waivers, he was back on the team. So at the Monday night game that I was at, he had already cleared waivers. He's about to be DFA tomorrow, but he's still in uniform on the bench, which imagine if you got fired from your job and you still had to like dress up and go to the team meeting the next day and sit there, even though you already know you no longer work for the company. That was very weird. The whole situation was kind of odd. Honestly, if I was Ty France, I would have called in sick and taken <laughs> yeah, a sick day. For and sure. Like, oh, oh, I, I can't come in. Something wrong with my eyes. I just can't <laughs> see myself showing up today. <laughs> <laughs> but that whole situation was very weird. And it did seem weird that Ty France almost was kind of like the scapegoat in a situation. And yeah, there are, you know, underlining reasons too. In what way was he a scapegoat? Yeah, how well, was he like a fall guy, I well, guess? To me, it just seemed weird. Like you had Polanco, who was not producing at all, who has since turned it around. We'll talk about that. But Polanco had not done anything. Mitch Garver is literally ranked the worst hitter of all qualified hitters in baseball. So it kind of seemed weird that Ty France, being a veteran guy, being with the team for a while, was just kind fan of... Fan favorite. Fan favorite. And was just kind of... Just randomly. I just... The situation was kind of weird. I understand some of their reasons. But... Yeah, no, I totally understand the reasons. I'm personally fine with it. I don't care. Garrett actually... I've already said, I'm not going to lose any sleep if Ty France gets DFA'd. Boom, gets DFA'd. And look at me. You said Fully it like rested. three weeks ago. You were like, "We gotta get, we gotta do something about Ty France." Because first like, base is a good. position that we can upgrade in a huge way. Yeah, a negative one point one wins above replacement. Yeah, dude, Patrick can play first base, and we would be a better ball club. <laughs> it will. Yeah, the way that Ty France was lovable it's on true. our team, dude, sucked. <laughs> He's been declining for two years. Actually, every ooh, um, I mean, all right. He's been declining. So uh, it's late in his contract arbitration. We'd have to pay him. We're already paying him like five, six million dollars right now or something like that. So they don't want to pay him more than that or the same as that next year in arb, arb four and his like last year of arbitration, basically. It's just not worth it, man. I Try just don't see it in the way that since almost the entire offense has been garbage, Ty France gets DFA'd. I don't see that as a fall guy. The same way, if the offense was great and Ty France got DFA'd, either way, he needs to go. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't change things in my mind. Like he didn't, he wasn't the 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 example that they wanted to put out there. Like yo, step it up, or else you're gonna get DFA'd too. Nothing like that. It was just his time. We need a good first baseman, a dude who can hit bombs. Dave Niehaus agrees. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. But yeah, I mean, th we saw the day coming. Yeah. We could see it coming from a mile away. It just sucks to see it happen at a low point in the season rather than like a good vibes upgrade where we immediately have someone new coming in. And it's just That's true. up in the air right now. You know what, though? Actually, maybe it is better that it happened when it did. Because what if we got the Randy <laughs> Rosarina trade, right? Like we're all cloud nine and then Ty France gets the axe. And even though from a team standpoint it was the right move that's like saying yo we're on an upswing and you're not going to be part of it and i feel like that could have affected the vibes worse Maybe. you know so like people like jp and stuff who's played with ty france for years it's easier to i guess cut ties when your team is at its lowest point yeah rather because we don't want another like kendall graveman situation yeah and, oh, that was brutal where it was it was the right move or move well Kind of. I mean, just the at the wrong time. It was at the wrong time. So I think the Ty France move probably honestly happened at the, the best possible time. But yeah. uh, when yeah, you yeah. were talking about his declining, this is Ty France's average at the end of the year for every year that he's played. First year, 302. Then 291. Then 274. Mm -hmm. 250. 223. The dude is slowly learning how to unplay baseball. <laughs> and he's on the wrong side of 30. Uh, it just the improvements aren't there. He was steadily declining. And I've been guilty before of wanting to hold on to fan favorites for way too long because yeah. you like them. And with the Mariners finally like having a chance to win and stuff, I'm more okay with saying goodbye to 
fan favorites, but also the fan favorite Ty France. Even with JP not producing, if we cut ties with them, I would take that pretty hard. Yeah. I would be upset if we cut ties with JP. Yeah, but that's not going to happen. No, no that's I got not, a so I got a couple things yeah. here about Ty France and and so you were talking about how Polanco and Haniger and Garver are all here, but like they're not the first to go and it seemed weird that Ty is mm. but it makes sense because of where he is in his contract and we spent all that money in the off season to sign those three guys mm. and obviously yeah, Polanco is starting to turn it around and when he puts the bat on the ball well things go well for him but Mitch Haniger like you said one of the worst or the worst <laughs> everyday player Garver and Garver it also is not anything close to what he was oh, last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He he batted 270 last year. Yeah. He's hitting under 200 still. God, we were so excited to have two Mitches, and but, now we, do, want, <laughs> we don't we want, want no, nothing one. to yeah. do we with two. no Mitches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the point I'm making is the Mariners are not going to move on from the money they spent in the offseason, and it sucks to say that because I like I guess I should apologize because I was calling for Polanco to be gone, but it felt like Colton Wong again. Like, I don't I think was, you were mistaken in that. I wanted Polanco gone. Like, I did too. I just and want the Mariners the time, to be willing to eat some money to move on from somebody who is not making a difference to to op- like pay for them to go away so that we can get someone else in there. Like be willing to do that. And the Mariners are too cheap to eat five, ten million dollars. Yeah. They're not gonna do it. So I'm sad that we're gonna see Haniger and Garver on our roster for the rest of the year. And I'm o- kind of okay with Garver being our backup catcher rather than sure. Zavala. So oh, we God, yeah. so we have another open roster spot to use. And then, I don't know. So Ty France, it was just time for him to go. I hope the Mariners are trading for somebody on the market. Because if they're not, then we just basically got Randy and we're like, we can get the same pro- offensive production at first base by calling up two, ran- like our platoon first baseman from AAA and have a DH first baseman platoon situation. And call it good rather than like upgrading. They're like, yeah, let's just get the same production from Platoon. It's like, okay, I see them. I see they might do that, but I really want them to go pick up a big first baseman. I think that door is wide open and they did that on purpose. So if they don't, I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah, it would also seem kind of weird if the Mariners had worked on upgrading their roster, but now are just leaving first base as a black hole. Uh, so I, I think something's, something's going to be done there. It has to, even if it's not a big name. I know, you know, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. It has the most talks with the Mariners. I keep refreshing MLB, uh, (laughs) trade rumors just to see if it'll happen in the next like 45 minutes. Could you imagine, imagine if we could break it live on it? Well, it wouldn't be live for you guys, but it would be live for us. We'd have to put that out and this out immediately, (laughs) (laughs) but no uh, edits. The more news comes out about Vlad, it's the more it's now nah, they're going to keep him till next year. Like Bo and Vlad are going to stay there until next year. And they've been saying that since the beginning of the trade talks. Yeah. And now it's kind of coming out that that's the news again, even though the Mariners are rumored to be the most aggressive. I'm sure they're calling every day. They every have to day. Be. They have to. Yeah. I imagine today when Polanco was going off against the White Sox, two home runs and a RBI single. single. RBI single. Let's go, Polanco. I imagined. Uh, Jerry DePoto on the phone, just like, ah, uh, yeah, Polanco's looking pretty good. <laughs> Throw Polanco into the deal, send Vlad over. <laughs> it's funny. I think Polanco saw that the Mariners were doing. He was like, oh my god, they're sending people to either the unemployment office or Toronto. I got to start hitting now, <laughs> and he has been. I mean, he was uh, he was getting better up until this point, and then today popped all the way off. He must be eating more carrots or something. He's seeing the ball well. Something. But I don't know. The wind in Chicago, I don't want to you know, say anything. But he when he puts the barrel on the ball, there's a lot of pop, and the wind helped him today for sure. Two home runs. Sure. Well, I, I think it would have even been a home run at T-Mobile, his shot to center field today. Oh, it that was one was blasted. Demolished. Absolutely crushed. He uh, got all Didn't he hit that. one at T-Mobile? couple days ago mm, maybe like really high i know rayleigh did that, on sunday is that not polanco i watched i, I watched class a when i was at the game on monday i watched class a put an absolute charge into one and uh, it was a night game it was cold it was like six it was literally like 60 degrees uh the wind was just blowing straight in 
and it looked like that scene from the cabin in the woods when the guy's trying to like jump away and he just hits a force field. That is what the <laughs> ball did. It literally looked like it was just going to go to the moon and it just hit a wall and just died. Oh, yeah, so I, mean, I was there on Sunday. I do want to talk a little bit about our stadium. Let's um, do it. I was there on Sunday. And, you know, when they light off fireworks and you see the smoke go through the stadium, you could see that it's going from left to right, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes in and you see it like tornado in the outfield. There's like, it hits a point and like swirls it, and it like, it's not just the wind blows one direction straight. Mm -hmm. So when you watch that smoke go, you realize like that ball is not just, that ball's hitting a like a swirl a of air yeah vortex out there in like right center and they die dude yes and i watched it too like that's why that rayleigh super high fly ball i was like come on go <laughs> luckily it was far enough over there that it's not it didn't get caught up in the tornado that's out there in right center field i swear to god but um either way our stadium it is the worst for offense uh, for every team not just us we just play half of our games there so it looks True. very really bad and and it drives our our front office to build a team that's pitching and defense heavy rather than offense heavy doesn't attract hitters so it sucks that the during the 25th anniversary of safeco t-mobile park that we're seeing all these terrible offensive stats in our stadium over the last 20 years like mm -hmm. it's it's terrible it breeds a boring brand of baseball it doesn't attract star hitters we can't win our division and almost never reach the playoffs and that's that sucks man for for the fans for the city Teoscar Hernandez, after winning the home run derby, talked about how our batter's eye is not lined up with the plate. It's not parallel with the plate. It's all off kilter up there, and it throws off the depth perception of the batters that come here. And he's not the only person to talk about that. Many hitters have said that over the years. They need to do something. If they don't change that batter's eye this this offseason, or even before the fucking playoffs, <laughs> they need to do something. Do some fucking field construction so the hitters can see the ball out of the pitcher's hand instead of just saying, oh, but we're going to dominate the opposing team and our pitchers are going to be really good. Like, How about we just even the playing field a little bit and hit the ball at home to have some fun like where it's hard to hit anyway? Like, let's make it a little easier for the guys who play half their fucking games there and make it fun for the fans in the city. And another thing I noticed is uh, when I was there on Monday, that late cold night, I was in row three uh, right behind, like, uh, first baseline. So, I mean, I'm practically on the field. I am right there. And the wind is blowing straight in. You see the flags in the outfield just pointing directly at me. And... Uh, you know, it's dark, it's cold. I don't understand why they wouldn't close the roof in that situation. Like, sure, it's not raining, but it's just cold and miserable. Like, why do we need to have the roof open? It's not like, oh, it's a beautiful sunny day. It wouldn't make sense to close it. It's nighttime. It's going to be the same amount of dark. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> control the environment a little bit. Yeah. So I, and and uh, we actually felt a couple raindrops throughout the night, too. And I'm just like, why Why is the roof still open? What is the purpose of this? What benefit? There, are, I know you, like, you can close it in the middle of a game. Yeah. It just has to be at the end of an inning to not, unless it's like an emergency. How long does a, it take to close? 10 minutes, 15 10 minutes, minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Who was the, it's um, fun to watch too. I was going to say as fun. a fan, yeah. when it happens, it's cool to be there. And who think about that? how many who? fans don't yeah. come all that often and have never got to see the roof closed. That would be awesome for them to see. And mm -hmm. it just would have been beneficial and practical. A cool ass feat of engineering as well. Yeah. I can't think of his name. You know it. You know it. Who's the guy, the MLB network broadcaster or Fox maybe anyway he was on the air with Aaron Goldsmith and was like yeah the roof is a definite like yeah. advantage and he's like no AJ Pierzynski there you go AJ That's his Pierzynski yeah. I hate that guy our favorite <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he's such a brash guy like he's so overconfident man mm -hmm. like like no what I say is what it is and like you can yeah he yeah. just said that it's a huge advantage for the Mariners, but it's not. It's not. But doesn't he? And even if it is, who cares? It's our home stadium. Make <laughs> yeah. it an advantage. Was he trying to say we should close the roof more? No, he was saying that 
when that game happened, it was like on a Fox game. So instead of our traditional announcer announcers, we had Aaron Goldsmith and AJ Brzezinski. Yeah. Um, and he was saying that like it controlled the lighting more. Uh. So now the lighting is all even. And also when you're up in the 300 level and the roof is closed, it almost seems like the field glows. It does. It's really cool. It's yeah. really fun to see. Yeah. Honestly, but they should close the roof more little, on night games. A little kingdom-esque. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. Was I about to say? I was about to say something. Oh, he would have said the same thing. Like, you know, oh, sure, close the roof during the Mariners at bat. Mm. It's like if you did it the other way, he'd be like, yeah, I couldn't wait till the Mariners were up. Make it a little more. <laughs> okay, yeah. All he was right. just trying to be a little yeah, bit. yeah. yeah. Bleh, like mean or whatever yeah. say something and then goldsmith wasn't taking it well either he was like why <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. it's like what do you mean can you explain i actually why? can't explain <laughs> i just decided to say that with... like, oh okay aj cool like goldsmith is awesome yeah goldsmith uh held his own there that was cool yeah also kind of like and i've goldsmith has said this on his own that he kind of likes um uh, being with Przinsky because he can be more like he can play kind of a different character per se than when he's doing his traditional Mariners broadcast. When he's on the Fox national broadcast, he can be a little bit different and call the game in a little bit of a different way to balance with AJ. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of fun. And a former player that has a lot of knowledge about the game and mm-hmm. like, yeah, they can, they can talk to each other in a different manner yeah. and on a national scale, he's trying to be more, Himself, I guess, rather than the Mariners guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he get, puts himself on display, I guess. And I like that. He's good at that. Loves to talk about food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Loves it. Always. <laughs> He's always asking what Gary's eating. Gary's always like, oh, my wife made some sandwiches and there's this stuff. And Whenever they're out of town. Yep, after the game, we like to go to this one specific restaurant. And, uh, and Rick's, Rick, he's always talking to Rick. And we get steaks, don't we, Rico? <laughs> he only yep. calls them Rico when they're we... talking about food. <laughs> Rico. Hey, Rico, yeah, Rico. We sure do, Aaron. We get the steak. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty much always eating steak. <laughs> He's like, and it's ball three. You know? He's like, all right, Aaron. It's like, uh, Rico, it's funny, though. what was that steakhouse we went to in Kansas City? Rico's like, uh, Kansas and- City Steakhouse? That's the <laughs> one. <laughs> and then Rick Riz is like, and the runner's leading off second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, How do you like your steak? You, did you have it rare? Or did or do you have well, a well? What did that time? You can't get your steak well done there, Rico. <laughs> Damn it, I love Goldsmith. Yeah, yeah. Entertaining. <laughs> it's very funny. Also, some of the most um, kind of, I guess, like viral calls over the last couple years have been from Goldsmith. Because when something crazy happens, he projects like crazy he does yeah it's loud yeah it's very fun. excited it's funny when he thinks something's gonna happen and it doesn't because <sighs> he has to like apologize because he gets so boisterous about it you but know, i do like that about that's him. what <laughs> bugs me when he's on the radio is, yeah and it's a, it's a drive high deep and going caught on the <laughs> yeah. warning track and it's like, blasted don't do that to me <laughs> yeah yeah he's done that to us a few times I on know. the radio man Sims has been doing giving a us lot blue too. balls. Yeah. yeah, well, his eyes, you know. I was, <laughs> I'll give him a I'll give him a break. Blorp, blorp, blorp. <laughs> hey, Lloyd. Sims has been pretty good. Hey, this Lloyd year. is hey. so good. <laughs> if anyone hasn't heard, Hey, Lloyd, look at Dave Sims. Hey, Lloyd, and you'll, that, you'll have fun. Is it's, that a New York New York home run? No, it was at. Uh, <laughs> Sa- run it. Why not? <laughs> it was at Safeco at the time, oh, but it was. Uh, I thought they were they were on their way. To New York, okay. I think. I think they were traveling, and uh, <laughs> Lloyd needs to buy some ice cream <laughs> for the team. <laughs> Seriously, go to. Uh, we could probably even link it in the description, couldn't we? I something. We'll Either yeah, way, we'll do that. Go type just Mariners. Hey Lloyd. <laughs> hey Dave Lloyd. Sims. Dave Sims. It's hilarious, man. <laughs> it's a good one. Well. <laughs> Uh, we were pretty sad this last week, right? Our last episode was our most sad boy episode. And this week, we thought it would get even worse because the Mariners were setting all kinds of records in, in the wrong direction. Uh, they were they had lost their 10-game lead on the division in 24 days, crushing the, oh. the previous record of 33. 
on pace, games on pace to strike out the most times in a season of any team in major league history yep that's a lot uh and we're leading by a lot too probably yes. like 75 to 100 strikeouts over the oakland a's um what else what else our swing and miss yeah i touched on it swing just, and miss in the zone in the straight zone straight up that's what, middle middle too. That's what's crazy. I I touched on this stat uh, briefly early on in this episode, but yes, the Mariners are fourth in chase rate in all of baseball, which means they are not chasing the ball out of the zone. They're not swinging at ridiculous stuff. They are their fourth best in baseball at attacking pitches in the zone. They nice. must have great plate discipline then. Well, shockingly enough, they are dead last in zone contact percentage. I wow. have never seen an anomaly like this in baseball. Major league hitters not being able to hit the ball in the zone. It's one thing if, you know, they're dead last in chase rate and they're just chasing everything. Because they did that a lot last year. Their chase rate last year was very bad lunging at sliders and stuff way out of the zone. They have toned that down a lot this year, but they're missing balls in the zone. Dead last in zone contact percentage is crazy. Yeah, I remember early in the season when we were playing fairly well, but I remember being like, they just, they're not hitting the pitches that are there to hit. They're fouling them back. They're fouling them off and then striking out because foul balls are strikes, you know? <laughs> it's like, we how come we're swinging at those pitches but we're consistently not doing damage with the pitch to hit that's in the middle of the zone and even this last A's or A's Angels series I saw this montage of all the swing and miss middle middle swing and miss in the whole series why did you watch that that's just painful oh uh, well it came up on my feed it knows Dude, it knows what I like we need to get you psychiatric help <laughs> uh, well when you, you must have been depressed <laughs> to click that link when you care so much about the mariners you got to dig deep and, <laughs> and you got to go through that pain to see what's going I wrong i need to with feel something yeah <laughs> <laughs> so they swung a miss a lot on middle middle pitches and yeah. it was painful to watch yeah uh but i watched it so you didn't have to <laughs> But on the bright side, now with our new additions to the team, we have been beating up on the White Sox. Uh, the Game one yesterday, the Mariners scored eight runs in the first inning. And what's even crazier about that, all with two outs. They had two outs with the bases loaded, and we thought, well, here comes another Seattle special. And then, boom, eight runs, all with two outs. Very exciting. Also exciting, the Mariners' eight, nine, and one hitters, Dil Josh Rojas, Dylan Moore, and Victor Robles, hit back to back to back home runs. That was so cool. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I haven't seen that for a long time. That feels really good. That means something is turning around, right? Well, so what's funny is they also announced on the broadcast, because I was actually golfing at the time I was listening to the game, uh, it seemed like, oh, my God, it's been forever since the Mariners hit back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs. But it's like it two or three years ago. It was two years ago, and it was, uh, get this, it was Julio Rodriguez, Eugenio Suarez, and Jesse Winker hit wow. two years ago. I'm kind not too surprised like that, that it's only been a couple years, but that's a long time. I mean, we've been doing this for two years, and... And we probably did a podcast about it and didn't don't remember, you know. But maybe we started halfway through the year. I don't know. But either way, that's that's a rare occurrence. So I don't yeah. know. And then today, yes, today back to back bombs as well. Yeah, yeah, Polanco and Cal Raleigh. Yeah, that's five different players. Yeah. That's Dude. a lot of the team hitting home runs. They're homering. I don't know. It's Chicago, the Windy City. The wind helps. Who it's definitely flowing out White to right. Sox. Drew Thorpe. Oh, yeah. Drew, Drew Thorpe. There we go. That okay. sounds like a politician name if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Vote Drew Thorpe. <laughs> Drew Thorpe for Cy Young <laughs> mayor? I don't know. Anyway, Drew uh, Thorpe, he's been pretty good. Today it was Fetty. Eric Fetty. He's been pretty good. Yeah. The, uh, the White Sox have surprisingly good starting pitching and not as good as ours of course but the Mariners got all over those pitchers mm -hmm. Eric Fetty's been really good this year 
also Drew Thorpe. We looked at his at least his fantasy stats, and we were like, "Dang, this dude's good." Every time he goes out there, he's he's given the team a chance to win or better. So uh, tomorrow we have Garrett Crochet. So we'll see what happens there. Last time we faced him, he absolutely peed all over our face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what yeah. to say. He, he he sure did. Yeah, he whipped it out and zing zing zing. Uh, he got all of the Mariners all at once. What's crazy about the Drew Thorpe thing too, and I mean, we kicked him out of the game in the first inning. We chased him. He didn't even get out of the first, and even with getting two outs and then tacking on eight runs on top of it. But his last five starts before this, six innings, no runs, five Ks. Six innings, two runs, a strikeout. Six and a third, one run, five strikeouts. Six innings, two runs, four strikeouts. Six innings, zero runs, five strikeouts. He's a constant six innings, you know, two or less runs, and the Mariners just jumped all over him. So it's not like we knocked around some nobody who just came up to get shelled. Yeah, He's He's a good pitcher. Uh, one of the funniest comments I saw was that his pitch comm must have been sent to been put on speakerphone. Because, I mean, the Mariners were jumping all over him. We connected good. to their Bluetooth. But he's also got Colorado and Miami in that mix. So I wonder how good he was at the beginning of the season. I don't have it in front of me, but that's okay. Either but way, I mean, yeah, he's he was a good some, pitcher. He's some nothing, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's his, on a roll. His start before Seattle on the road in Kansas City with a good team, and that's six innings yeah. of shutout ball with three hits and five strikeouts. Dude's getting it done. Yeah. Same true. with Fetty. Fetty's been getting it done this year, too. He, they might be on the move, uh, Fetty and Crochet. We'll see if Crochet pitches tomorrow, and if he does, he'll probably be on a pitch limit because he's likely to be traded before Tuesday. And... You know, they'll probably keep him on a lower pitch count. So hopefully we can do a little bit of damage and they'll pull him early. Yeah. And now that the Mariners are no longer allergic to sweeps, maybe maybe let's try to sweep the White Sox tomorrow. We I swept think... a couple of teams. Yeah. It was but just every... that we hadn't been swept until we had until we did get swept. <laughs> I did mention Randy Rosarena can hit lefties really well. His numbers are really good. Garrett Crochet, the lefty, tomorrow. I think Randy's going yard. Randy already got his first hit in his yeah. first game as a Mariner. That's excellent. awesome. I, I love we're doing Randy. it. <laughs> so we're hoping that we get another player. Yeah, on I was the just going to say we should talk about how we need more. Yeah, this we is great. Do we're super stoked on Randy? That's very very exciting. For and us. Jimmy, sure, yeah, yeah. But man, that's not enough. I one, agree. We one need more bat. offense. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like. You know, you're not going to bring in Randy or Rosarena and be like, well, it's all up to you, bud. No. <laughs> like, it's, no. Even that's... just Vlad wouldn't have worked. It's not like superhero Vlad can come in and carry this whole team. And Randy's not, not that either. So, yeah, it needs to be a combination of additions here. And like we we're saying, Canzone might find himself in AAA. I'm hoping that we make enough additions to move Mitch Hanniger, like off our roster, yeah. not just onto the bench because he's so – he's – not good. I mean, he's been healthy, which is great for Mitch Haniger. He's been playing a lot, but I didn't want to see him play this many games. This, yeah. Like, and also he's not that good. He's doing exactly what he did last year before he got hurt. So if we make enough additions, then Mitch Haniger can go somewhere and we can eat that money. But that means the Mariners have to go sign two guys. I keep refreshing MLB trade rumors, just praying, seeing if we can get something. Jesse Winker's a Met. <laughs> hey, four minutes ago. Yeah, didn't the Mets fans used to give Jesse Winker a ton of shit over yeah, there? Yeah, they don't in like him in New York. Oh, this is gonna be funny. The Mets have so much weird stuff going on. <laughs> the grimace thing. Jose Iglesias yeah. has a hot pop single or something that he performs oh. on the field. Like, yeah, there, there's weird stuff happening in, over there in, in it, Metville. It's still LOL Mets. Land. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, well they're they're trying to compete. <laughs> yeah, they're trying. I guess. Well, the Mariners are going to get this sweep. I know that for sure. Hopefully we leave. I don't know. What if we leave uh, with Luis Robert on our team, too? Just take him on the flight? Then what do you do with Robles? Platoon those two? Uh, I guess that's you're weird. right. That's, that, that was my thing. That's so like, weird. Too, to... too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many right-handed bats. Too many outfielders. Need a left-handed bat, if anything. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm okay. Honestly, I'm I mean, okay. having more of something isn't a problem, but it seems so crazy to you're pick right. up Luis Robert and then be like, you're a platoon guy. He'd well, be our um, DH, and yeah, we'd have to true. maybe get rid of Mitch Hanniger, is what I'm saying. Well, or and, send yeah. a well, minor leaguer down. Use Dylan Moore in a utility role and whatever. What I just send Cade Marlowe. Is like, so, I mean, think about We already have the issue of having players that are not as good as Luis Robert Jr., who we think should get playing time. Mm-hmm. And with the platoon, they have a good game, and then they ride the bench for three or four games. So I, I don't see us getting Robert Jr. and then just doing the same thing with him. Right. I think with a Rosarena, Robles, our outfield is set. We have enough depth there. I'm not mm-hmm. worried about any more outfielders. Let's get a first baseman. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's yep. really that's the, huge. the I feel only that. hole now. And I know we were kind of talking about uh, Jazz uh, Chisholm joining us. He is now a New York Yankee. Yep. And uh, the Yankees were hot front runners on that. And we, we were front runners on it like a week and a half ago. And then the Yankees obviously had interest too. They signed him. That's good. They needed something too. They're one of the worst teams since – Father's Day as well, but along with the Mariners, about the same record. So they've been trying to add offense. And yeah, I, I mean, since we got Randy, we don't necessarily need to get Jazz. He'd be a good second baseman, left-handed hitter. But we need. I feel like we need a left-handed bat somewhere. But I think that's why we're kind of holding on to Polanco, hoping he'll turn it around because he's a switch hitter. I still think Renjifo would be a good add, um, but that's mostly in context of Polanco being DFA'd, which isn't going to happen. Mm-hmm, I have yeah. to be okay with Mitch Hanniger, Polanco, and Garver being here and figure out what else. They need to add at first base, basically. Yeah. Get a left-handed first base bat. And what about trading from like our starting rotation? Luis Castillo would open up so much payroll if we traded him, and, and he'd go to a contending team, and that's a bunch of players that aren't even like being talked about on the market as much, where like the Orioles... like. They said they'd be willing to trade Mullins and Mountcastle. It's like wow. maybe not for, <clears throat> you know, one guy, but like they're willing to trade those guys. Maybe like a Ryan O'Hearn or something helps the Mariners, a left-handed first base DH type guy. He's been hitting the shit out of the ball this year. But if they end up trading like Brian Wu and for like Ryan O'Hearn and I don't know, like maybe that works. It's like two guys that are already on major league rosters just swap like and – maybe whatever prospects they add in package and stuff like that. Because Brian Wu is very valuable, isn't going deep into games. We've kept him on a pitch count. Health is an issue. I feel like he'll eventually be a bullpen guy. But I think it's trending that way, yeah. But the he Orioles just doesn't have need the arm it. strength. Orioles need starting pitching. So Well, I know that they also the Orioles just got Zach Eflin from oh, the Rays yeah, as well. So yet. they, they yeah, have bolstered their starting pitching okay. a little bit. Well, any any team that needs Brian Wu, like maybe the Cleveland Guardians are willing to trade Josh Naylor, something like that. First base DH, left-handed masher Josh Naylor. Apparently, he's been sitting a couple days. I saw the rumor that he's probably on the trade block if they need to go get starting pitching. And Brian we know Wu? He can, and we know he can hit in Seattle. So Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he has no so problem he... doing that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Were you going to say he took us behind the woodshed? No, I was just going to say he took over the series when oh, we yeah, played yeah. the Guardians this year. He was all over that series. <clears throat> yeah. Bo Naylor, uh, too. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, basically, we need a first baseman. There's a couple days left. I was excited. Uh, it's so funny. We, we said from the very beginning the trade deadline is literally going to go to the final week, and then someone's going to break the floodgates, and then – Everyone's going to make trades. And it's funny enough, the Mariners were the ones that broke the floodgates with the Rosarena trade. Yep. So that was exciting. And it was the first biggest one. Yeah. And now everyone's on the move. It's happening mm-hmm. like crazy. It's really exciting. It's really fun to watch. <clears throat> and let's hope that the Mariners, I mean, the Mariners have to add at first base or yep. else, the, you know, it's, it's just a little too little if we don't add. And then we have some... Yeah, how underwhelming would that be too to like go out make a big thing and then if that was it, that was it. Yeah, and to you know, be the first ones, it's like yeah, you think they have more coming. We need up, you know? one more. These bat next at three least. days need to. We, we gotta need, get going. I think we need one or two players in here. Yeah, offensive players. 
I would actually personally be okay with us not adding at first base if Polanco Polanco's recent turnaround is not a flash in the pan. Yeah. If he How can, can you trust that? I, I can't. Who I'm can, saying who can tell? Exactly. It's been but, so weird. But I'm saying, but if he continues to cook, let's say we <clears> don't get a first baseman. He continues to cook and then we just platoon first base. We could even throw Rayleigh at first base from time to time. I do Good. like that so idea. That is one scenario where I would let it slide <laughs> if Polanco can keep producing. But who knows? He could just be having one good week and then it's back to bullshit. I'm kind of disappointed that we're still like Vossler and Locklear and haven't traded for a first baseman. And like we, yeah. we, we have too many players on our roster that are easily replaceable triple A style players. That's like, uh, like do something now, <laughs> like go get two players, go get Brent Rooker and Lawrence Butler from the A's. Go do it right the now. That's that a they're... right-handed and a left-handed hitter. Go do it. Just do something. There's players available. The A's have said they don't want to trade Brown. Oh, yeah, well, he's 30. Like, what are yeah. they going to do? <laughs> they're, they're in the they're in the moving process mm-hmm. and have no idea. They're, next year, they're just going to be called the A's yeah. with no city. Like, And they're going to be playing the in Sacramento A's. at over 100 degrees in a fucking minor league stadium they're basically why do they homeless. want to keep brent rooker he wants to leave i guarantee you he wants to go to a competing team right now so yeah. i don't know i just i'm just saying that there there's options do riley green we, matt beerling from the tigers do Let's we need go. a shortstop um jp's out for four to six weeks we got Dylan Moore. I That's think kind of our guy right now. I think Dylan Moore is a fine enough replacement. Sure. Right now. Me too. <clears throat> but what do we do if we need a third baseman? And Dylan Moore is playing shortstop. I mean, it's Josh Rojas every day right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So why we say wouldn't something need happens? It. What if he gets hit in the pinky? Yeah. Well, About then four to six weeks. That's why we have like a Leo Rivas around. Yeah. That's just a guy. That's our go-to. Yeah. We don't want to pick up someone just like. But I mean, you don't want to pick up. Pretty good. You I don't think want to pick Dil- up someone just in case something happens. Just no. for the next four to six but weeks. I mean, like a, that's a Dylan Moore filling someone with situation. Like second, short, third experience. Who, like a Dylan Moore. Luis Renjifo. I'm kind of saying. I've guys, been saying that for weeks. I know, He's perfect for this team. It would be great, right? Yes. He hits the ball. That's he puts crazy the bat on the beneficial. Ball. And he plays infield, like for all positions. So, I mean. And he's a switch hitter. <laughs> what do you want? Like, go get Ren Hefo. He's available. I guarantee you that the Angels will trade that guy <laughs> if for the right package. And it, I think he'd be very valuable. Well, it looks like the Royals are interested in Luis Ren Hefo. Well, the Mariners should ago. be interested in Luis <laughs> Ren I'm sure they are interested. They got to be on the phone about him. That's the perfect fit for this team right now. Bat to ball guy, plays all defensive infield positions, switch hitter, speed. Let's go. He's still 26, 27 years old or something, too. Right. Um, Dylan Moore's not a movable piece for the four to six weeks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is interesting to see how the next couple days, the final days of this uh, deadline plays out. We're definitely going to be keeping close tabs. And if something crazy enough happens, we might have to do another touching base, a little we might have to. Middle, midweek yep. episode. If we'll feel it out. We'll see what happens. We'll the see trade, what happens. Dead, the trade deadline ends on Tuesday, like midday Tuesday. Mm. So, yeah. Midday? I think so. A, yeah, like it's a, like 4 o'clock or some shit. I think it's o'clock. like 3, 4 Eastern or something. <clears throat> 4 so. Eastern? I feel like it. I don't know. We'll, Six we'll see. So if we <laughs> if we have big news, yeah, we'll try to get it out, what, Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon and yeah, see pump what, something out maybe for you guys. if we have time to do it. But we'll one see. thing we do know for sure is our next series <clears throat> up, we actually oh, yeah. organize these for the next teams we're playing. We got the White Sox tomorrow for the final game. Then... Bastin, the Red Sox, the other Sox, going from Sox to Sox, then a uh, day off and back home to play the Phillies. That Phillies series is is going to be crazy. I'm going to one of those games. I love Bryce Harper. I'm really excited to see Bryce Harper. Uh, yeah, well, but, hopefully the- we sweep the White Sox. Yes, and we go to Fenway and produce a lot of offense because <laughs> that place. I think we can hit in Fenway. If we can't hit <clears> at Fenway, Fenway, we can't hit. Who? Cal Raleigh. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. I think we're going to kick ass at 
Fenway, but the Red Sox have been really good recently. They've kind of done what we did early in the season, and we swapped places. Like, yeah. But we're both competitive teams. They're a little bit hotter and in better vibes than the Mariners are right now. So hopefully we can go in there and hit the ball around. Yeah, coming home for Philly. Oh, the Phillies in town. That's that's going to be rough, but it's going to be fun to see the Phillies. I, I kind of want to go to a game. I might get out there next weekend. It's going to be, I mean, especially if the Mariners are able to ride this hot streak and keep the bats alive, that Philly series is going to be really, really exciting baseball. Those dudes can hit, and those dudes can pitch. They're nasty over there in Philly. Man, so they're the best team in Major League Baseball right now, I'm pretty I think sure, they record-wise. Are. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a real tough one, but at least we'll be at home. Which yes. I'm happy about, because at, at Citizens Bank it'd get pretty rowdy, and I don't. <laughs> I think the Mariners might fold over there. I'm glad it's at yeah at T Mob here. So yeah, and we and just yeah for the listeners, we do have YouTube videos where we have these cool pennants behind us, which is what we're talking about hanging up anyway. Uh, <laughs> like our video, li- uh, like subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you all for being a part of this. Uh, it- And we are just so happy that uh, this episode wasn't all doom and gloom. We were prepared. I was going to wear guy liner and uh, (laughs) bust out my favorite, the used shirt. (laughs) We don't need that. Oh, my. (laughs) That's how that's how doom and gloom it was. I was going to dress like 2006 Patrick. He's going to whip out the wardrobe and the makeup. I was going to grow some hair and uh, flip it sideways across my face. Little devil's lock action. (laughs) But we didn't have to do that because the Mariners are making moves. It's been exciting. They, and in typical Mariners fashion, right when we're on the brink and can't take any more, they give us just a little bit to keep us entertained and happy enough. Yeah, we're hopeful now. Yes. Now that Randy's in the in our <laughs> in our sphere, these are, mood swings, man. <laughs> things are brighter and so brutal. Yeah, man, it's tough. Well, hopefully by next week, we will have even more great news about the Mariners adding and hopefully a sweep and a good Boston series. So, yeah, we'll be back next week with hopefully more good news. Thank you all for listening and go Mariners! And we're back. Matt, is there a skunk in here? I don't see one. It smells a little skunky. What is that? I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) I think it's just my natural musk. It must 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 be. be. (laughs) Let's go. That's awful. It was there, though. Gotta capitalize. God. Sorry, you guys got to sit next to me. This is the shittest podcast in the world. Yeah, it is.